Configuring VSS is pretty straightforward, and in this video, I just want to show you the steps so that you'll understand how to configure VSS because it's disabled by default for everything except things like backups, developer access through the API, and that sort of thing. Now, configuring VSS is done on each individual volume, but here's a gotcha. You need to watch for this on the exam. You especially need to watch for this out there in the real world. That is, you should defragment the volume before you enable the volume shadow copy service on it. The reason is, the way VSS works, when you have a highly fragmented volume, it kind of gets confused and you can have some issues. So watch for that and make sure you defrag the volume before you enable VSS. So to configure this or to turn it on, to enable it, whatever you want to call that, you want to start the computer management tool. Then you will expand the storage. You'll select disk management. Right click on a volume, select properties. And then you'll choose the shadow copies tab. Now I know you're not going to remember that. So let's jump out into Windows Server 2012 and take a look at this. Now what I'm going to do is jump out to the desktop. Now way back in the start of the course, I did a new interface tour because Windows Server 2012 brings the same interface to us with this operating system that we kind of had a little bit of trouble adjusting to in Windows 8. If you've used Windows 8, you know it looked really strange when you first started and you were convinced you weren't going to like it. But after a while, it felt really good, and it starts to get a little better. So what I've done in that video, when I did the interface tour, I demonstrated how to pin things from that other start menu out to our taskbar, and that's exactly what we did. We pinned administrative tools right here, and so I'll just click administrative tools to go in there, and we're going to go into computer management. So I'll double click that. That will open that computer management MMC the Microsoft Management Console. And on your machine, the first time you open that, it could take it a second or two to open, so just be patient. Notice under Storage, we can just go into Disk Management, and this will show us our disks, let us do all kinds of things, and I'll just show you right here. Notice I only have one volume on this machine, but if I right-click on it right down here, then I can Notice I can shrink the volume, I can change my drive letter and paths, I can do all sorts of things. Or I can come down to Properties, and that's what I'm going to do, and left click on Properties, drag this up here where we can see it front and center. And notice I have a tab here called Shadow Copies. So I click that, and notice this is the configuration that we're actually doing, and I want you to watch this on the exam. I mentioned this in the video entitled Understanding VSS. We aren't turning VSS on. We're just enabling it on this volume. And what we're really enabling is for the contents of shared folders to work with shadow copies. And this allows users to view the contents of shared folders as the contents existed at previous points in time. Now what that means is the users can work with their contents on their shared folders and they can go back and see prior versions, prior versions, every time a volume shadow copy is created. And we'll talk about that in just a second. So notice, on this volume, all I would have to do is click Enable. Now, I'm not going to click Enable here because I don't want to wait for it. But notice I can enable it or I can disable it. But I just have to select my volume here and then select Enable. Now, I can also choose to click on Settings here. And if I click on Settings, notice here's my volume, and then the storage area located on this volume is C. I might see some others. And then I can set a maximum limit to use for the volume shadow copy service. And I'll just leave this at the size. And notice it's telling me here I have to have at least 300 megabytes of free space to create a shadow copy. And then here's the schedule. Now watch for this on the exam it automatically creates two shadow copies per day. And they're warning you here, avoid creating these more frequently than once per hour because you will get into a resource problem. Now I'm going to click on Schedule, and you will notice that there are two schedules. It's going to run automatically uh, weekly uh, at 7 a.m. Monday through Friday, 
And the idea there with Microsoft is let's take a uh, volume shadow copy and we'll get a copy of all of yesterday's work, assuming we're a seven to five, nine to five type of organization, seven, eight, nine to five, whatever it is. Usually if you work where I do, it's uh, like seven in the morning till whenever. But then I can also click the drop down and see that there's a second one at 12 p.m. every day. And so that'll make a volume shadow copy of all the day's work or the morning's work. Then we get it again the next morning at 7. And so it just keeps going. Notice I can click on Advanced here, and I can work with uh, Advanced Schedule Options. And then I'll just cancel out of this. And so there's a lot of things that can happen here, and I'll cancel out of this. And then I will cancel out of here. But that is how I would go in and enable the Volume Shadow Copy service. You will probably see this in some form on the exam, so just play with it and get your hands on it a time or two before you go take the exam.